Didi Vana is a full professor of the University of Chemistry and Technology in Prague, um, where he leads a research group on wastewater treatment and reuse. He has been active in different positions, both at the International Water Association and also of the European Water Association, where this year he was made an honorary member. Furthermore, Didi Vana is also a chair of a group of specialists at the wastewater treatment and reuse of the Czech Water Association. And he was involved as a consultant in the process of the approval procedure of the EU water reuse regulation. I really hope you will all enjoy this webinar. And Didi, I will now hand over the presentation mode here to you. Welcome. Okay. So it's uh, my great pleasure that uh, I can share with you uh, this afternoon or uh, evening uh, a few pieces of information about the current situation in uh, water use in Europe and also about the new regulation which was uh, accepted uh, by the European Union uh, just this year. Uh, here you can see the uh, content of my presentation. And uh, I will uh, talk about the drivers uh, and limitations and about the extent of water use. And then we will briefly uh, summarize uh, the um, uh, content of the new regulation. Uh, the water use, uh, the main reason for water use in Europe are mostly the lack of water which is resulting from uh, more frequent and repeated periods of uh, drought uh, which are connected with increase, increasing water stress in, in more and more European countries. And this is, uh, of course, also connected with increasing demands of water for agriculture, industry and human uh, water consumption. Uh, we can see at the same time that the price of water in Europe is uh, steadily increasing, which on the other hand uh, makes the economy of uh, water use uh, more beneficial. And last but not least, uh, we have now the processes and technology available which can uh, produce a uh, tailored quality of reclaimed water, so we can today even produce water which is suitable for direct potable use and concerning the public perception it's important that water uh, reuse is now understood as a part of the circular economy of course uh, we uh, have also some limitations uh, of water reuse uh, in europe uh, first of all this is uh, some uh, uncertainty concerning the environmental and health impacts of water reuse the production of reclaimed water is uh, not cheap and uh, there are some additional costs connected with the reclaimed water storage and distribution. And as I already mentioned, in some countries, the uh, public perception is uh, of reused water is uh, not very good. So we uh, should consider this as a limitation as well. And until recently, the big limitation was in the lack of uh, legislative regulation on the level of the European Union. When we speak about the droughts, uh, they always appeared in the whole uh, written history of uh, European continent, but they are becoming more frequent and more visible. Uh, since the beginning of the 21st century, we experience uh, several periods of droughts uh, and more and more uh, EU countries are now, are now susceptible to the uh, drought risks. You can see it on the map, the different color means uh, the uh, risk of droughts in uh, individual uh, European countries. The last drought period we experienced in Europe started in 2014 and culminated in 2018, uh, 2019. And it was really visible because we could see the empty riverbeds, uh, dead uh, fish and uh, uh, no water, not only in the rivers, but also in the wells. So people were uh, really aware of the problem of the drought in Europe. 
the sustainability of the country to the lack of water can be uh, measured. We are using the so-called water exploitation index, which is uh, defined as a ratio between uh, total abstraction of fr fresh water uh, in the given country per year divided by the long-term average resources. And if this ratio is higher than 20%, the country uh, is already susceptible to have uh, some uh, water shortage uh, problems. And as we can see from this map, about one third of European population is living with, in countries which are suffering from a uh, uh, very uh, high exploitation index and about 70% of the whole area of the European Union can be uh, sensitive to droughts, uh, especially in the areas around large cities. Water, uh, fresh water is used in Europe uh, in a different way. It, uh, the structure of water usage depends very much on the region. So we can see clearly on this diagram the difference between uh, water usage in western part and uh, eastern part in Europe and, for example, in the southern part, while in western eastern parts we can see that most of uh, fresh water is used for the energy production and industry. In the south, uh, water is uh, used mostly for agriculture, especially for irrigation. And uh, those countries at the same time are the countries with the highest water exploitation index in Europe. If you look at the extent of uh, water uh, reuse in uh, Europe, we can say that the extent is much lower in comparison with global water reuse market. The countries of European Union are currently uh, reusing only about 2.4% of the total effluent of municipal wastewater treatment plants, which represents uh, less than 0.5% of the total amount of fresh water which is used in uh, those countries. But the potential for water use is much bigger, as you can see from some countries, for example, Cyprus and Malta, they are using uh, 90, 60 percent. And also countries like Green, uh, Greece, Italy and Spain, they use uh, between 5 and 12 percent. So the potential is much bigger. Uh, but uh, was not so used so far. Uh, this map uh, documents what I already said, that uh, the uh, use of water differs also concerning the uh, reclaimed water. So the countries in the south, they are using most of the reclaimed water of, in agriculture, while the rest of the Europe uh, is using the reclaimed water for industrial purposes, uh, environmental purposes, and some other purposes. In general, if you look at the European Union as a whole, uh, the diversity of water use is quite large. It starts from agriculture and goes from the use of re reclaimed water in uh, irrigation of the municipal greenery and the households for, for flushing the toilets or even in some countries like in the Czech Republic for brewing the beer. Uh, what was the uh, development in the uh, European Union policy concerning the water use? So the whole story started in May 2012 when uh, the European Commission uh, issued material called Blueprint to safeguard European water resources. And in this document, the European Commission uh, declared uh, water reuse as one of the most natural and environment friendly way of finding new water resources. And it promised to accept some uh, instrument which will encourage water reuse in countries which uh, so far were not using uh, reclaimed water. In 2015, the European Union accepted uh, uh, some action plan on circular economy 
and included the water use in this uh, circular economy, which helped very much to start some serious studies on uh, water use in Europe. Follow in the following year, uh, uh, the European Commission uh, received uh, guidelines on integrated water use uh, into water and uh, water management in the context of a water framework directive and uh, in uh, 2018 uh, a group of experts uh, produced uh, material which was summarizing minimum quality requirements for water reuse at least in agriculture irrigation and aquifer uh, recharge and uh, this uh, material was in fact the basis for the regulation which uh, proposal was accepted in May 2018. Uh, the form of regulation means that when this uh, legislative norm is accepted by the Council and Parliament is uh, valid in all uh, countries and it's not necessary to accept it in the national legislation. Uh, the uh, proposal was discussed in uh, committees of European Parliament. It was also very uh, intensively discussed it, uh, in influential European Committee of the Regions. Uh, there were many suggestions. Also, the Member States uh, discussed uh, the material, which was finally approved and accepted in May uh, 2020. What is the purpose of the regulation? So this purpose is to facilitate the water use whenever it is appropriate and cost efficient and the main role is to uh, help to increase the extent of water reuse uh, in the European Union and at the same time to allow the continuation of water reuse practice in those countries who were already uh, using reclaimed water before this regulation. The material is uh, quite flexible and uh, if there are some countries which do not want to practice water use and if they uh, properly justify this decision to the Commission, uh, they can uh, refuse in fact the uh, acceptation of the uh, regulation. Uh, the uh, EU regulation covers the reclaimed water which is produced from urban wastewater uh, when it's treated according to the Directive 271, either directly on the uh, urban wastewater treatment plants or in some uh, special additional reclamation facilities. And uh, at the same time, this product meets the requirements which are summarized in Annex 1 of the regulation. Uh, from the beginning, the uh, uh, regulation was aimed mainly at the use of re reclaimed water in agriculture, but during the negotiation it uh, was possible also to broaden the scope of the regulation so it covers also the uh, water use for other purposes like the industrial purposes, urban water management uh, and environmental uh, purposes. Uh, because it's a, a kind of a, a new activity for many countries, uh, the stress is given also on proper training of uh, the staff of uh, the reclamation facilities and also of the users. And uh, the whole uh, project of water uh, reclamation and water reuse uh, consists of two main parts. It's a production of reclaimed water uh, distribution and then the operation of the system, the use. So the, such complicated system must be operated only on the basis of uh, permission and the permission is issued by competent national authorities, some water authorities, which are also obliged to verify the compliance uh, of the uh, 
systems, operated system with the issued permission. When, uh, we can go just very quickly through the individual articles because, as Mai already said, you can download the, the complete text of uh, the regulation. So I think we can, uh, we don't need to lose too much time with the individual articles. I will just to uh, stress some uh, major features. So the the subject and purpose is to promote uh, the use of the uh, reclaimed uh, water as a kind of adaptation of the European Union to climate change. The regulation covers the uh, reuse of uh, urban wastewater treated, which are treated according to the directive, and which meets at the same time uh, the uh, requirements uh, summarized in Annex 1. Uh, article number 3 is a quite useful part of the uh, document because uh, it uh, brings the definitions and can serve as a kind of uh, explanatory uh, dictionary. So you can see here the example of the definitions. The system of water reuse consists of the production, that's the water reclamation site, and then the uh, end user. And it's very important uh, to decide uh, which responsibility uh, is on the side of uh, the producer and on the user. And this uh, article uh, defines the obligations of both, both parties and it uh, defines very important uh, institution of this regulation and that's the so-called point of compliance. This is the point to which the responsibility for water quality is on the side of the water producer and uh, behind this point uh, the water quality responsibility uh, lies on the uh, end user. Each uh, water use uh, system or project uh, must be uh, accompanied by a risk management uh, plan because there are some risks connected with uh, water use. And uh, this article says uh, what is the content of the uh, risk management plan and which are the key elements which uh, uh, are also summarized in Annex 2, to which we will get later on. Uh, reclaimed water uh, permit obligations. This is the article which defines what should be uh, included in the permission for uh, water use. And uh, the permission is issued with some limited time uh, validity. So it is renewed from time to time. And it must always co contain the definition of the point of the compliance. Of course, uh, the water authorities uh, in individual member states, they are also responsible for the compliance check and they should do the compliance on different levels. Uh, when uh, there is, the authorities found some non-compliance with the conditions set out in the permit, uh, the uh, system of water reuse should be immediately stopped and some uh, remedial uh, measures should be immediately accepted. In uh, uh, more extended water reuse systems, uh, the uh, history could be of uh, cross-border relevance, so this, uh, this article gives also the obligation to member states to be involved in such uh, international relations when it's uh, applicable. And as I uh, already mentioned, uh, the uh, water use is considered to be part of the uh, water saving schemes in Europe. So people should be aware of this uh, possibility and uh, the member states are also uh, required to issue some uh, water uh, reuse awareness campaign uh, to explain uh, the people uh, the reasons why the uh, water reuse is accepted in a given re region or country. Uh, Article number 10 is oriented towards the general public 
and uh, it gives the obligation to the member states to inform regularly the public about the quantity quality about the compliance check results and about possible problems with uh, the water quality if they uh, are found so the public must be very much involved in uh, these water reuse projects uh, to be able to accept them uh, european uh, union uh, member states are also uh, required to inform the commission about uh, the situation in individual countries and the commission from time to time will evaluate the available data and according to the next paragraph it will it is also expected that the commission could uh, somehow change uh, the text of the regulation after the evaluation to adopt the uh, text to the latest uh, knowledge from the development of science, the technical, technological progress, etc. in respect also to some other materials like the recommendations of the WHO or uh, ISO standards. Uh, Based on this uh, evaluation, uh, it is especially expected that the Commission can change or improve the formulation of annexes of uh, this uh, regulation, because uh, the annexes are now based on the current knowledge, and as we we uh, gathering more knowledge during the time, it they should be updated. Uh, the uh, member states are also uh, expected to develop some system of penalties for the case of violation of this regulation to, to prevent any cases uh, of uh, the misuse of uh, reuse water and, and in compliance with this regulation. And this uh, regulation uh, was accepted uh, or entered in force uh, in uh, June 2020, but the Commission provides some time to the Member States to prepare for this uh, regulation, so the regulation is uh, will be applicable uh, from June uh, 2023. Uh, just briefly to the annexes, uh, the annex one is uh, summarizing the uh, quality parameters which are uh, summarized in the form of table, the quarter quality is divided into four classes uh, and the individual classes are suitable for different crops uh, irrigated by reused water uh, with different irrigation technology. Uh, the annex defines also the bacteriological and chemical uh, quality requirements and also defines the frequency of sampling uh, for the routine monitoring when the system is already in the operation. But because uh, before the uh, water reuse system is put in the operation, the, the regulation requires the so-called validation of the system. There is another table which contains some more stringent requirements for water quality, which must be checked before the system is uh, put in the regular uh, operation and annex uh, number two is uh, defining the general requirements for uh, concerning the risks connected with the um, water use so each water system uh, should be accompanied by some water management plans and the assessment of the risks must be done from uh, two viewpoints one is the uh, risks related to the environment and uh, the other is the risks uh, related to human and animal health if there is a necessity some other requirements can be included for example uh, the requirements on heavy metal concentration pharmaceuticals antimicrobial resistance it depends on the uh, local water authorities and finally uh, the projects must be always uh, accompanied by some uh, preventative measures. For example, 
recommendation of some specific irrigation technology when uh, the crops are uh, irrigated uh, so there should be some uh, pause be before the harvest for the pathogen uh, die off and all sites which are uh, in, in where the uh, water the reclaimed water is used they must be labeled by some signage declaring that the reclaimed water is in use not uh, just the regular tap water so just to, to summarize my uh, uh, presentation water use in, uh, in the European Union is driven by uh, several factors, but uh, the lack of water is probably the main one. The directives uh, provides now the unified uh, water quality requirements for, for the whole Union, which will help uh, to keep the same conditions on the Union market, so for, for example, for the agriculture pro producer, from different uh, countries. Uh, the regulation uh, is dealing only uh, with the water which is originating from the municipal wastewater treatment plants and covers the water use in, uh, not only in agriculture but also in industry and uh, municipal urban water management environment, etc and the regulation is applicable from june 23 which gives enough time to the member states to to prepare so that's uh, briefly my uh, presentation about the water use situation in europe and thank you for your attention have a question for Gigi. It seems like the last majority of reuse projects are for non-potable purposes. What do you see the future of recycling for potable uses in Europe? Yeah, the, the use of uh, uh, reclaimed water for potable purposes in Europe, that's the purely the questions of the public perception because most of the European population is living with the idea that uh, we have enough uh, drinking water resources and that uh, the situation is not so severe that we need to, uh, as Eileen uh, showed, that we need, uh, uh, do not need to drink the uh, water from the toilets. We know it very well from our country when uh, there are some successful projects uh, with the reuse of the so-called uh, grey water. But when we were uh, talking with people living in these new houses which are equipped with the uh, reused water uh, supply, they told us, okay, we can use it for the flushing the toilets and uh, for watering the garden, but we will never agree to drink it. So I think in Europe it will last for some time to convince people that they uh, can also uh, trust to the reused water for the drinking purposes. Okay, we have one more question here, Gigi. Um, I was wondering why up until now indirect potable reuse has been largely neglected in regulation. This is in contrast, for instance, to some regions in the US. What is the main driver causing these differences? Is it public perception, cultural or climatologic? Uh, uh, both, uh, both. The, the, the situation in uh, most European countries, as far as the uh, water shortage is not so severe yet that uh, we should come to the uh, uh, potable water reuse. Uh, the other thing is that uh, uh, there are in, in some countries, and it was clearly visible during the uh, negotiation of the proposal, that uh, some of the European Union member states uh, are clearly against the water reuse at all. And it was very difficult to find some compromise. So the final text, which you can download from this web page, is really compromised because uh, it's, uh, some countries uh, 
uh, I don't like to uh, name the, those countries who were strict against the regulation. The public perception uh, of uh, reused water is very low, and it uh, was a success during the uh, negotiation that we managed to enlarge to broaden the scope from agriculture uh, use only to also to use of uh, reclaimed water in irrigation of the urban green area uh, for um, uh, environmental purposes at, uh, uh, in general and also for industry purposes that for the industry means mainly for uh, cooling uh, purposes and at this moment, uh, I don't believe that we will be able to move forward if we include also the uh, potable reuse. That could be the next step because, as I said, the uh, regulation will be uh, regularly evaluated by the Commission and if there is such need in the future, uh, there is a, a room for uh, enlarging the scope of the regulation in the future, but uh, the situation at the moment is not favorable of that. So why, why do you think there are so few steps taken in Europe to prepare for, for, a, for portable water reuse? Uh, well, uh, First of all, uh, we have to demonstrate. So uh, I think it's very uh, uh, useful if uh, uh, there are some demonstration projects like, uh, for example, now uh, our university is involved in a large European project, which purpose of the project is uh, to demonstrate that uh, water, reclaimed water can be used exactly for the purposes which are declared in the regulation for the irrigation, for the greenery uh, and uh, for the recreational purposes like the irrigation of golf, golf courses, etc. So the next step will be to demonstrate also the safe uh, uh, treatment for, uh, for making the drinking water, but uh, I'm not, not uh, sure that there are some uh, EU countries at the moment, which are, uh, are really willing to proceed to this step. It seems all the questions coming in are for you, Didier. Here's another one. Okay. Irrigation is today also done with surface water, rainwater, and so on. The water quality of these water types does not meet the EU criteria. Will the EU directive not hamper the use of these sources in the future? As such, the directive will have the opposite effect. What do you think about that? No, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the purpose of this uh, directive is uh, not to replace the surface water uh, for irrigation. The, uh, as I said, this uh, regulation is uh, aimed at the situation when the, this is uh, necessary because there are no resources and when it is also economically uh, feasible. So if uh, the country has enough surface water, uh, then there will be no problems to use the surface water for the irrigation further. What is, uh, uh, what I hope will be the uh, outcome of this new regulation is that in, in some countries they are using uh, also the groundwater for the, for the irrigation and that's a very bad because the groundwater should be uh, spared only for the preparation of the tap water, of the drinking water and not uh, used for other purposes. And uh, that's uh, why I, I think the new regulation will help to, to save also the groundwater resources in Europe. Didi, do you have some uh, final remarks here to close off the webinar? Maybe uh, uh, I can uh, say that uh, uh, maybe it's some uh, strange, but uh, the last drought period we experienced in Europe from 2014 to last year 
it was uh, very helpful to change the attitude of the politicians and also the public uh, in, in the perception of the reused water. Before 2014, it was even uh, very difficult to, to bring the, the idea of water reuse in some countries on the table in the negotiation. And now uh, I think it's much uh, easier because people could really see on their own uh, eyes that there are some problems. When there was no water in the rivers, uh, no water in the wells, so now they understand that we should look uh, for some other water resources and uh, reclaimed water is one of the most natural uh, water resource. We are, um, in Europe, uh, many countries are typical inland countries and they have no access to the seawater so they can't produce the water by the desalination. So this is the natural option and I hope it will be more and more accepted uh, in Europe in the future and that the regulation will help to this.